Hello, hello, and welcome back, guys. So Alibaba has been getting a little bit of a spanking here. It has been going down and down uh, these days. And if you take it to the last three month period, you can kind of see it here, like creeping lower and lower. And the stock is currently sitting at uh, 80 bucks almost uh, when it was actually even lower at some point yesterday. And frankly, I was potentially thinking of adding more to my portfolio, but I do have quite some of it. And uh, my average is about 94. I kept, you know, I started buying, I think when it was 118 and then average down a little bit. But right now sitting at 80 does, um, you know, it definitely does look appetizing. Now, I don't think I will be adding more because I always have a limit uh, to how much I will be adding on any single stock. And I definitely urge people to do so because there is always risk for any single company, regardless of how good it feels and regardless of what uh, of a great opportunity it could actually end up being. You always need to be, you know, taking risk into account and, um, you know, being safe, regardless, again, of what you think about any sort of company. Because we are not insiders, we don't really know what, exactly what is happening with Alibaba. We do see the business, we do see the financials, and that's all we have. But we have to always be wary about things going on wrong for any single company, frankly. And this is why it's always good to be holding an average of companies, uh, and, you know, a stock portfolio. Now, uh, we will examine some things about what is, has been happening lately with Alibaba and take a little bit of a look at the overall picture of the financials uh, through the years and deduce whether it makes sense for the company to have dropped so much and what is potentially going to be happening in the future. And as usual, we're going to be using our stock evaluator tool to see whether this price right now is a good buy or not. And as uh, always, if you are not um, a Patreon and you want to become one, you get full access to our tool here. You can go to myinvestorsheaven.com and uh, sign up for becoming a Patreon and you will, again, you will get full access to this tool. So let's uh, start. Alibaba is looking to build uh, ChatGPT-like AI into meeting and messaging apps, looking to capitalize on the current trend, I suppose, because uh, companies that mention AI seem to be going higher, well, I guess most of these, with uh, Meta having you know, grabbed uh, a lot of attention regarding that and you know, continuing to, to climb upwards, Microsoft, of course. All of these companies uh, you know, mentioning AI seems to be having a positive effect, and this is probably what we're looking at right now with Alibaba. Uh, with their own uh, integration here. Their large language model developed by Alibaba Cloud is now powering interactions with a new version of the assistant. And it helps by analyzing audio and video files and uh, generating text summaries, etc., etc. Things that have pretty much been a thing for years, frankly. But again, the stock market, uh, the market uh, pretty much overall, seems to be liking AI these days, even though I think uh, this is uh, sort of like a massive overreaction, frankly. Now, with Alibaba, we know that they are unveiling their spin-off plans, and so they are spinning off uh, some of their businesses into independent publicly traded companies, distributed as special dividends in the next uh, 6 to 18 months. And so the core reason for this one, basically two reasons. The most important one is that Chinese regulators basically cr cracking down on anti-competitive practices. You may have heard of these as anti-monopoly, like antitrust rules in the US. It's the same concept. You don't really want companies to become monopolies. And uh, in many situations, you will see them, uh, you will see the government actually breaking this down into multiple different companies. Happens a lot, and this is what's happening right now with China. Now, the good thing about it, when you are looking at these kinds of situations, if you're having a company that is um, dividing itself into multiple companies, this tends to be a positive thing because it's easier to organize these companies and it's easier to run them. So when you have like a monolithic company, which is um, uh, like, a, uh, let's just say something like Berkshire Hathaway when it's like a, a conglomerate, it's much, much more difficult to, to run them. And they tend to actually be valued less than the sum of its uh, counterparts, of their counterparts. And so spinning off can have some uh, positive effect on the company and the stock price. Of course, you know, in this current negativity, you may not witness it. But, you know, in the upcoming few years, this will probably become um, obvious and will become apparent uh, for uh, the stockholders. Another interesting thing is that Michael Berry is actually long on China's Alibaba and JD.com, quite a lot of it actually. These stocks are now a fifth of his portfolio, that's a lot, that's 20%. And I do understand him, I also believe that um, Alibaba, JD is a slightly more expensive, but it's probably also an interesting opportunity. But Alibaba especially, I think, is uh, frankly so cheap that I, I basically have no words right now. And uh, obviously there's a lot of negativity because of what has been happening with China. 
Um, the past couple of years, two or three years, have been terrible for China. Um, a lot of crackdown, uh, crackdown from the government. Um, the whole economy was basically uh, has basically come down to its knees because the government has shut it down. So things have been going so dire that it, it does make a lot of sense for the overall market to go down. And this is creeping up till today, at least for a while. But on the other side, on the other hand, it actually gives potential uh, new shareholders fantastic entry prices here. And this is why I totally get why Barry would be long on China's Alibaba and JD right now. They are just so cheap and uh, the value is there. Why is the value there? Let's take a little bit of a look. The current P ratio is 20 almost. But um, remember, this has been creeping up higher recently because the net income has been going down and down. We talked about it in previous videos because, again, of basically a lockdown in China. And outstanding shares have been going down these days. And you can kind of sit here and they will keep going down because Alibaba has announced a lot of buybacks. So through the quarters, you will be seeing more and more buybacks and the outstanding shares going down, which is pretty great for shareholders as well. And the company also have some, has some insane values here in regards to its price to sales and price to book, very low values here. And again, you may be seeing a red here, but the tool will automatically give you a red when this value is a threshold of one, which is preferable, of course, but this also is dependent on the company that you are analyzing. So not every company will be having a one. More often than not, it's like dinosaurs, companies that have a tons, of, tons of factories and things of that sort that are, gonna be, that, that are going to be having low price to book ratios, for example. And, um, uh, you know, a company that is um, like a software company or a company that is a tech company or a company that is growing a lot may not even have too many assets uh, to begin with. And, you know, this value may be high. It doesn't make a ton of sense, but you can kind of witness and see already how cheap the company stock price is in regards to revenue, for instance, where it's 1.6 times the, the revenue. It's absolutely insane. <laughs> frankly, you know, you kind of wish to have the money to have had the money to be able to buy the whole thing, <laughs> frankly. OK, so what about the financial statements? Income statement here, and you take it to um, the last 10 years, you can kind of see the story. And you'll see that 2014, the company was doing 8.4 billion. Right now, they're doing 126, with the last year being a little bit more, 134. But notice this progression through the years, and remember the progression of the stock price. Like the, pro the progression through the years has been absolutely decimation in terms of the revenue uh, projections, like 50% years, 70% years, insane growth. And a little bit of a decline because we know because we all know why and um, you can compare and contrast this to the um, the actual metrics which is basically the stock price uh, here you can kind of see the chart and compare and contrast what is going on with the company's um, uh, financials or through the max the revenue has been going up and up and up and up and up and all of a sudden this has been plummeting so this is a reverse story and this is exactly what i love to see as a shareholder and um, the thing is, you may be wondering and you may be thinking to yourself, okay, revenue is good, but it's not the end all be all because you, we need to be making money, right? But the thing is, we do make money as well. Now, we make less, yes, because uh, again, the company wasn't based practically almost not operating at all. And so from 22, we went down to five, now to 10, and it looks like we're going to keep growing again, pretty much going to the previous uh, years eventually. And uh, this is, again, a picture that you like to see because the financials and the operations of the company are very solid. And it's only the stock price that doesn't reflect that. And that's exactly what I'm looking for, frankly, if I'm looking to buy a company. And I just wish I didn't have uh, too much already because I would definitely be going in right now. Now, the discounted cash flow model we will tell us a few things about how the company is priced, the stock actually is priced in comparison to the financials. And it's very po important because we can deduce whether it makes sense to potentially add or uh, to a portfolio that we already have or open up a new position, pretty much open a new position. Now, the revenue growth of the company can be a little bit deceiving here because um, you see 27, 23 and five, minus 5 here. And also the same thing with the net income margin, 17, 11 and 8. And that's because of the dire situation that Alibaba and the Chinese economy has been in the past couple of years. And it's understandable. And this is why this handy little table here can really, really help you decide what kind of projections to use here. And of course, um, uh, patrons, users of our tool here can try their own projections all day, uh, different projections, different scenarios, and see what they're, they're most, most comfortable with. Now, 
for the for the net income and the margins and everything, you can kind of see this tool here, this handy little table, and decide what makes sense. Now, the revenue growth has been down. Overall, it has been 27%. Now, the company has been suffering a little bit. So, you probably want to use lower values and not go like to the 20s, which could happen like two or three years from now. Don't get me wrong. They could happen, but we want to be conservative. So, I will go something like five, seven, and nine. Now, the net income margins are a little bit trickier. And this is why you, it pays to take a look at the table. Now, 2019, 20, 21, 22, 23, they did 23%, 29%, 20%. This is the norm, pretty much. And then this is the odd one out, like the 3.8 and 8.3. As the, the, stock, the, the, the company is actually creeping up higher again, their net income margins are probably going to go up where, to where they, they were, or at least close to where they were. So it, it doesn't make too much sense to use like something like three or seven, for instance. You could, and I will actually try it just to, just to see what will happen if the company somehow stays here. So let's just say that the company does eight. But the more normal situation is that the company does something like 15 or 17 here. And the free cash flow margins, Again, a little bit all over the place because of what has been happening, but typically in the previous years, somewhere around 100%, maybe a little bit more than 100%, but again, I will be conservative and I will start with 80, 90 and 100, and 13% for the annual return is what I typically like to choose. And I hit calculate and let's see what we're getting. Now, you will see that with an a margin of 8%, which remember, it's extremely suppressed here, we're looking at 51 and it's understandable because the company basically makes much, much less than they used to. So we will have to be in a situation where for the next five years, the company basically does the same that it did during the pandemic years or at least coming out the pandemic years. So I don't anticipate this will be the norm. More than likely, we're looking at this, if not a little bit more, frankly, which takes the company's valuation at 120, almost 162 here. And frank, 162.4, and frankly, it could even be a little bit higher. Numbers like 18 or 20 or even more than 20 could also make some sense, again, for the little bit more aggressive investors. But we don't necessarily need to be aggressive. We just want to be buying at a price that makes sense. And 80 bucks, based on what I've been seeing with the company and the financials, frankly, to me, looks like an insane bargain. And I, I know people are scared because of the stock price, but I pay no attention to the stock price at, like at all. I, unless I want to buy or sell <laughs> because I need to know what the stock price is. What I do pay attention to is the business and then uh, buy or sell and forget about it because that's, that's how you should be treating the stock market. Never get into your, uh, you know, uh, your emotions. It doesn't work this way. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about Alibaba and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.